Hey guys, we are here at Aero Friedrichshafen at the Gliding Expo. Let's have an overview what you can expect here. We are here at the entrance. Let's start directly with Alexander Schleicher and I can see there already the AS35. What I really love is this retractable tail wheel and I've heard you can even steer it. Yeah, wow. That's, that's something I would love to see in my AS33 as well. <laughs> And then, of course, these nice bog wipers here. The engine, the combustion engine, which is used in other AS gliders as well. And then the wings are not here, but it should get 20 meters of wingspan. A great glide ratio, especially at high speeds. And a maximum wing loading of 62 kilograms per square meter, which is even heavier than at the AS33 with 60. That's my favorite. We are sitting here in a Tesla. Let's have a closer look here at the Schempert booth. Uh, the Ventus E, we have seen it already at the Segelflieger Tag, but I think there are some more modifications nearly ready to make the first flight. Yeah, looks great. I think should be ready to fly. The most interesting thing is if they have a gas lever. Wir haben jetzt mal hier das Powersetting gemacht. Okay. Einfach aus dem Grund, weil wir gedacht haben, vor allem in meinem Sportrumpf ist es sehr eng, ja. dass wir quasi nicht so gas. So it's something which is really great. They have here the gas lever on the side. So it's not the rotary encoder. Um, yeah, something I have not seen yet. Here's the water cooler. So we are here at SZD and uh, there is a very interesting electrified glider with a front electric system, I think? Right, yeah. So uh, we uh, developed for the, especially for the SD55, uh, completely new uh, front electric system, completely from scratch, um, designed for the 55. Um, took there uh, a bit of, uh, like from the community, the, the inputs, uh, what, they, what they want and what they need, and, uh, and uh, put a nice plane here. And the SZD55 is a standard class glider, right. 15 meters wingspan right, and yeah. no flaps. Yes. What's about the glide ratio? Or? Uh, it's uh, with uh, the high wing loading about uh, 44. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So much better than club class. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you have here the battery compartment. Yes. Um, how much capacity? So we have uh, two independent batteries uh, with two uh, uh, independent systems. Okay. So we have uh, 60 volt batteries and uh, each system, uh, each battery system is driving uh, one inverter, which is driving one half of the motor, which means we have a complete redundant system. Okay. So we can, uh, like, if there is any problem in the system, we can uh, shut down one system and still have half of the power of the system still and remaining. What is half of the power? Uh, we have uh, uh, 18 kilowatts. Okay. Both system combined running. Uh, okay, you can still climb with nine kilowatt. Hour. Yes, uh, we have uh, for level flight. Uh, we need around five to six uh, kilowatts for level yeah. flight, and that fits very nicely with the battery capacity, which means we can fly around uh, one hour twenty, wow. and then around uh, one hundred thirty kilometers. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah. Hey, what I really like is the stick here and the navigation system. It's an open barrier from me, I think. Uh, combined with the Anemoy wind indicator. And how do you control here the system for the propulsion system? So uh, for the propulsion system, we, uh, we have a battery main switch, which is uh, enabling power from the batteries uh, all the way to the front, to the inverters, which are sitting here. Um, that has uh, the main reason for safety. So uh, all the time you need, don't need uh, the drive system. The power is completely shut down to the front. Yeah. Uh, so in, a, in case of a crash or ground handling, the power is always down. Um, so you will switch on the power. 
So the inverters would, uh, would be powered now. And then you activate the system by the switch, okay. which is then internally checking that everything is all right. The canopy is closed. Uh, all the other uh, systems are good. And then by a press of this button, the engine will start up and turn. After the startup, you can then just easily increase the power by the uh, rotary switch. Yeah. And can you also charge your uh, avionics batteries with a yes. big battery? Uh, we designed the whole plane um, to have the system as easily to, to fly as possible. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, that includes also charging the battery, the avionics battery in the tail uh, from the main batteries. Um, and uh, to make it like as relaxed flying as possible. Okay, great. And for charging, you just put the battery packs out yes. and uh, yes. charge them. How yes. heavy is one pack about? Um, the packs are 19.5 kilos each. Okay, that's so really it's easy, easy yeah. to carry around. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we really designed the, the whole drive system as a yeah for for the pilots, uh, for especially for the clubs or for the. Uh, for the private owners. Yeah. Uh, that's why, for example, we also installed uh, and decided uh, to, to use this D-Fly system because that much better fits like the private owners, the, the, the clubs and the, the needs of those expensive. customers. As well, and um, I think the price of this glider should also be competitive, yeah. I would say, or right. more than competitive compared to yeah. the current big manufacturers. Yeah, we are at around 130,000 uh, euros um, okay. for the glider. Uh, with the propulsion system. Well, it's great. But without avionics or? Yes, okay. uh, the base price. Yeah, the base price, okay. Yeah, but that's, compared to others, it's still affordable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. And you made some flights already with the system? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we are for the propulsion system halfway through. Okay. So uh, the system is running great. Uh, we are very happy with the, with the performance of the, uh, of the drive system. And we are really looking forward to, to fly also night thermals uh, when they are starting this season and uh, really looking forward to uh, look wh how capable the plane is. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish you all the best for the certification. And Thanks. perhaps I can also fly it at one time. Of course. Uh, I always like to see the electric gliders and um, how they fly. So here we are at the South African booth at Jonker Sailplanes. Of course, their best glider here is the J3 RAS, rear electric system. It's a smaller motor than I have on the A33ME. It's completely retractable, of course. Um, and I think the battery capacity is about 25% less than at the AS33ME. But overall, a great lighter, sleek fuselage, and um, also 10 square meter or about 10 square meter of wing area. Um, yeah, so direct competitor to the AS33ME. And I'm very curious to see to fly uh, next to each other. The really big news are is the JS2. 21 meter self launch glider with a combustion engine and the JS5, an open class glider with 24 point something meters. Um, but I think they are still in South Africa for more testing and certification and so on. So that would be really a big show here with the other gliders as well. Here we are at another ultra light, micro light glider, I think, about 13.5 meters of wingspan. And I've heard that uh, the design comes somehow from the Silent 2. They have their own front electric system here, have batteries in the fuselage, and the best thing is they also have a Steefly nav installed here and with a very special remote stick with yellow goldish <laughs> thread. It looks great. I think it's not completely ready, so the the ailerons and so on, they are not connected up to now. But why not? It's, it's a nice glider. Um, the performance should be also good. The shape of the wings is really cool. It's very elliptical here. And then 
they have tiny winglets for the designs it's not the best <laughs> could be a little bit larger looks like a high performance glider for the swing span and uh, yeah. I think it must be more affordable than the big gliders from the gliding manufacturers. Um, here the propeller doesn't fit, doesn't align here to the shape of the fuselage up to now, but they told me um, that it's only for designing now so that they get the perfect pitch and the perfect propeller first and then they try to, to make it to the shape of the fuselage. And then here in the background, let's go over there. There's HPH, um, we already flew there, the Twin Shark in Namibia and so on. It's a great company. Um, and even here, the Twin Shark is EASA certified now. Big news, great news. But this one is a big surprise here on the left-hand side. There's the Shark single-seater glider with the rear electric system. So you can have a self-launcher. Um, with this motor, it's not the, the front electric system, which is not allowed to make a self-launch. Let's have a closer look. In general, I think it's the same system as used here, uh, especially at the JS3 RES and the Ventus E. They use the solo system. Here it's still, I think, the smaller motor, but they told me, Jaroslav told me they will use the bigger motor at the end, the same one as in the A33ME, they have the batteries in the fuselage uh, installed, like also the 23E and the J3 RAS. And they have here the DCU unit with the rotary encoder to set here the power. Um, yeah, so, and at the end, it's still the same, the same Shark single-seater glider just with a different propulsion system. And what's really amazing, they have here all the fuselages standing next to each other with the different types of propulsion. This is number four, I think, of a propulsion system. That's really great and amazing <laughs> to have these all options available from one manufacturer. Let's check this out here. They have here the jet sustainer, so no self-launcher. Then this is the face version. That's the shark, exactly the shark, which I already flew at the eGlide competition a few years ago, um, with the batteries here also in this compartment. And then the Papa November is a self-launch version with a combustion engine. We're here at Advantech, that's an Antares project uh, with batteries in the wings, with self-designed batteries in the wings, with a front electric sustainer, a slightly bigger propeller so that you can also make a self-launch. And later on, they also will add a range extender so that uh, you can fly nearly unlimited so that you have a really big range. But even here with the wings in the, with the batteries in the wings and with a um, normal face battery in the battery compartment in the fuselage, there you can have, I think, 400 kilometers of, of range. So that's really amazing. Not sure if it is necessary, but it's a research project. And um, yeah, most likely I am also allowed to fly this glider very soon. They only have here empty trailers, but let's see if we can get a coffee at least. Felix, what's new here? We know these trailers for many years, they are great, but do you have any innovations uh, <laughs> here? Not much. As you know, uh, the most reasonable thing about our trailers is the quality and that's what we are taking care of. We have two things here to display. One are the rams for the, um, for the, rail, or the rails for the ram system. Um, with these, you can easily get the fuselage out of their trailer for maintenance in okay. the winter. Yeah. Um, it's pretty simple um, to use. They are adjustable for different kind of hydraulic and uh, mechanical lifting units. And then you can just place them inside here and get your fuselage out. Wow, so one club can only buy two of these and then 
he can use it for exactly different. that is the main advantage um, for club class uh, ram systems for the Ventus 3 ramp only for the Arcus ramp it's not possible because we have ah. a completely different system of the hydraulic lift unit but uh, for the Arcus it's easily you can take out these screws and then you can just place the ramp rails on the floor without the lifting unit okay so yeah. this is also quite easy so you don't need them but of course Arcus is usually not a club glider <laughs> <laughs> usually really yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but also an idea, quite often, you ship um, gliders overseas yeah. and then you can just take it off, put it in the container um, to roll it directly in the container. That's yeah. also a, a way for which you can use this one too. Yeah. Okay, and then you have here a... Uh, yeah. I don't um, know how do you call it, but... <laughs> yeah, it's our new hangar dolly. Um, it's completely a new invention. I mean, it solves the same problem. But it was really expensive to send it overseas, for example, with shipping costs more than 100 or 200 euros only for the shipping costs. And that was the main goal. Now you can completely disassemble it and get it in a package um, with 30 kilograms. So it's easily to ship. Um, and we also solved some main problems. One of the problems was always that this one was too high. So you okay. didn't... You, you were not able to get below every fuselage. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we solved this to get this lower and beside, by choosing the right profile, the bottom side is higher. So if you have some kind of edge in the hangar, ah, yeah. um, you get over it. Yeah? Okay. And there's no problem with the gear doors to, to damage them and so on? Yeah, that, was, yeah. that is the same thing. If yeah. this one would be higher, yeah. you have the problems with the rear door, um, with the doors. Yeah. Another problem, um, is always the construction of the mold for the gear. Right now we choose this version here to have enough space for the brake discs. Oh yeah. yeah. On our old hangar dollies this was a problem. Um, the, the brake disc touched um, the steel part and you always had to do a, a, diff, a different cutout by yourself. And of course, you buy a new hunger dolly, you don't want to do any cutout. <laughs> you have, you have yeah. it galvanized uh, right now, so then the galvanized is damaged. So this is one thing. Um, other thing is, of course, you, you only know that if you know our previous hanger dollies. I don't know. Um, about, yeah. The jacks are moved from the center position to the side. By this, um, the pedal can be much more easier. Yeah, and it's really good accessible. Um, it has a cool locking me mechanism right now, so when you pump it up, it locks in the up, upper position automatically, so, yeah. automatically. So in any case that the um, cylinder loses his strength, um, it is locked, it cannot fall down, um, that's also good. What's I, the price of such a um, It's dolly? 699 plus tax. Okay. Um, we always talk uh, yeah. without tax because we are uh, focused quite international we have a lot of customers all over the world so these are the main advantages of this one yeah, looks, basically the looks. most important was to get it disassembled yeah. <laughs> and we are now working on also we already have a prototype for the workshop dolly um, but we need to test it first okay <laughs> and then yeah. we can sell it <laughs> great yeah thank you so much Felix yeah you're welcome have a nice day oh there's an R missing let's see what they have here So that's an Antares glider. I don't know how many meters of wingspan, but they have a huge electric motor here. Also the range is very exceptional for an electric glider. Oh, that's really fast. compared to the A33 and all the others, I think it's much faster. How do you do this, that it's faster than others? Do you use a different actuator? Well, or? we're using hydraulics. Hydraulics, so okay. an electro system that takes care of the pylon, takes yeah. care of the um, 
of the uh, mobile bay doors mm -hmm. and it takes care of the landing gear. The landing okay. gear, the gear is also a switch, it's not a lever, yeah. which leaves us left hand control, right hand on stick, left hand takes care of everything else. Yeah, that's great. And then we have single lever control of all our engine operations, motor operations, mm -hmm. so retracted, extended, uh, ready to go and up to full power. In this case, the full power is limited to just the minimum for rotation. Yeah. So the time to, <laughs> time to full power is actually a bit slower now than in real flight. How is the range with the electric propulsion? How many kilometer, kilometers well, can you fly? We are looking actually at climb altitude. Because yeah. the thing is, uh, the gliding, the, the self-launching glider, the, the, the target is to get into uh, a wind thermals hang, whatever, mm. and uh, with a new battery now, we have uh, a climb altitude, including self-launch of 4,800 meters wow. with a standard battery and with an extended battery, uh, so with 18 cells parallel rather than four cells, uh, 14 cells parallel, we have uh, 5,800 meters, which is equivalent of 19,000 feet. Wow. Yeah, it's and, a lot. Uh, every single, uh, every extra additional self-launch is another 100 meters that you, uh, of climb altitude. Yeah. And you can just distribute it over time. And if you if you need more than 5,800 <laughs> meters, then you should probably head over to one of the power plane. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank you so much. Johannes, you have a very interesting futuristic project here. Uh, you said, I think we can fly with a wing loading of 70. Yeah, that's the promise. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how do you achieve this? Yeah, um, we achieved this with a, a new type of airfoil. So we have a double flap laminar flow airfoil. So we have a leading edge flap and a trailing edge flap and they both work in combination. And um, we achieve 20% um, higher lift than conventional flapped airfoils with our leading edge flap. And uh, this enables us to have a 20% higher wing loading wow. at the same uh, 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 takeoff weight. So mm -hmm. 600 kilograms. 8.5 uh, square meters for an 80 meter class Ooh. glider gives a wing loading of a bit more than 70. So the depth here is the real depth of an yes. 18 meter yes. glider? Wow. A about uh, 3 meters or 4 meters half span. So mm -hmm. okay. uh, 4 meters from the root. And yeah, we achieved this with a new type of airfoil, new class of airfoil. It has a concave contour kink and a in the high-speed configuration. And the bottom surface contour is continuous. If you come over here, then, then you can see the uh, airfoil shape. And you see that the, the high-speed configuration is continuous. Mm -hmm. We have a flap ceiling here, and in the high-speed configuration, you have a concave contour kink here. And uh, this uh, doesn't destabilize the, the boundary layer enough to trip the flow from laminar to turbulent on the on the gap. Okay. So the, the flow remains laminar up until the uh, main element of the wing. And in 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 high lift configuration for low speeds, you uh, have the opposite. So you have a continuous top side contour and the bottom so surface contour kink. Mm -hmm. And the in this configuration, the top surface is critical and the bottom surface is uncritical. So we have the kink always on the side where the boundary layer is uncritical. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the trick. And when can we see a glider flying with this yeah, we're, technology? <laughs> we're working on it. So we have a bit more than we show here. But uh, yeah, you know, um, it always depends on the... Also, you don't... You, you need... In addition to the technical part, you also need uh, the, the business part yes, of, the, of, of the thing. And uh, yeah, we're developing this right yeah. now. Yeah. Good luck with this. It's so interesting to see. And I think that's the big next step in, in gliding, so, in the technology yeah. to, to fly faster, to make bigger distance. And so yeah. we will we, be a complete game changer in competition flying, I would say. Yeah, we, we calculated for an 80 meter class glider a glide ratio of over 40, 41. 
at 200 kph. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what the others have now, but uh, yeah, what, do you, what's the comparison? So uh, GS3 from measurements has 37, I think. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that's a big step. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> we can see a lot of electric lighters here at the Aero. Um, I think this is something which is great for uh, a training glider with a double-seater front electric sustainer. Most likely it's not for self-launching, but um, yeah, you can avoid the outlanding or can extend the range and make some cross-country training perhaps. We are here at the Idafik booth and as you know uh, from last year I need to fly the simulator. That's amazing here these digital instruments. Ah. Wow I made it! I made the hidden error too. So what's really great here is the panel with these digital instruments. Thumbs up for these. Nice, funny idea. Here directly next to our booth, there are presentations all the time where you can also yeah, see some interesting presentations. <laughs> and of course, there we have the creator booth, the creator launch, where you can meet us, the creators, every day at 2 o'clock p.m. And um, it's amazing to see so many people around my new glider having a look at it and enjoying uh, yeah, this nice masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed this tour here around in the Gliding Expo at Evo 2024. And thanks to everyone who comes here, say hi and so on. It's, it's great to meet you as a community. See you next time. Cheers, guys. Yeah.